Hi everyone, it's John from OneUp and welcome back to another video. Now we had something exciting, strange and different happen on the evening of May 8th. Uh, someone over at Amazon, I think they messed up. <laughs> and we got to see something that maybe we shouldn't have. Uh, we're gonna talk about that today in this video. I'm gonna show the clip to you, uh, which is great because it's been taken down, so it's not actually up anymore. Um, and then we're gonna break it down little by little what it is. So before we get into that, uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, click that subscribe button, uh, click the notification bell. I usually put out one to two videos per week and they're all Wheel of Time centric. So anything to do with the show that Amazon Prime is filming in Prague, uh, news, set leaks, pictures, castings, you name it, I covered here in the channel and I tend to get a couple of exclusives here and there as well. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. All right, before we get into the actual video, spoiler warning, in this video, I will be talking about a teaser that Amazon Prime released. So if you haven't read at least the first 10 chapters of Robert Jordan's The Eye of the World, that's the very first book in the Wheel of Time series, before warned, I am going to ruin major plot points and character arcs just from those first 10 chapters. All right, with that being said, let's get on to the video. Do not underestimate the women in this tower. Really, really cool. Um, so we're going to show the clip a few more times and I'm going to talk about different aspects of it each time I show it. And then we have a blown up portion of the clip that shows a Trolloc uh, that Narg was so gracious to put on his Instagram. I, I have that here. I'm going to include that uh, later on when we talk about the Trolloc. But there's a lot to unpack here. Now, it's only five seconds and I know there's kind of a joke going around. I did an hour long video on the three second uh, morning teaser clip that came out. I did. It's 100%. Not a lot of people watched it. It's an hour long. But... Uh, this is not going to be that long, but there is a whole lot to unpack here. So uh, I'm going to give you my take on what I think happened here first. Uh, so this is the exact same clip we've seen from the Amazon Prime English account a month ago. So I'm thinking that this was a mistake. Now, the German Amazon Prime account, it released this on May 8th in the evening. Uh, and and it, was, it went up and I got a message immediately saying it was up and I, I got very excited Um I was out at the time, I raced home, I downloaded a copy of it, and I poured over it. And then, I'm glad I downloaded a copy because within 24 hours, this thing was pulled down, it was gone. So I think it was a mistake. I don't think they meant to put this particular clip out. Uh, or if they did, it was, it's pretty good viral marketing, one or the other. Uh, but I'm gonna lean towards, they probably weren't thinking about this as a marketing ploy, it was probably just an honest mistake. Um, they probably wanted to put that three second teaser out and just uploaded the wrong file or, or misunderstood something, put the wrong thing out. Because that three second teaser is this. It's the same clip. It's just you're cropped in on Moraine's face, on Roseman Pike's face, and you're not seeing anything else other than her face. Now, when this teaser came out, it was the very first time that Amazon Prime put something out on their main Twitter account, not just on the fan Twitter account. So they do have a separate fan Twitter account that is currently called The Wheel of Time. Um, and it used to be called The Wheel of Time on Prime. Um, and that was just for solely interacting with Wheel of Time fans on Twitter of Time. And they were the, the, the old social media um, manager that was running it. Uh, there is a new person now, uh, but the old person that was running it was really very good. They were amazing. They interact with fans, they interact with the content creators like myself and the Dusty Wheel. Uh, they were witty. They were smart. They knew the series. It was really good. They now have someone new running it, and there's been almost little, little to no interaction since someone kind of took over the helm. Uh, and I think they're just, you know, you know, kind of getting their feet wet a little bit right now. We're, we're waiting to see what they'll do. Um, but when they put this out, there was, I'm going to say mixed reactions to it. So it was a three second clip of the main actress's face for the show uh, on a platform that is showcasing it to everyone, not just Wheel of Time fans. Um, so a lot of these people didn't know what the books were, didn't know that there was a series being made, didn't know anything. And this was their first real interaction with Amazon going, they're making a show called The Wheel of Time. It'll be like Game of Thrones because there's going to be buzz and talk about it in the tweets. But there was a lot of confusion because it didn't showcase anything, didn't show anything. It was not exciting. It was actually really confusing to a lot of people and not well received. Now, even in the fandom, a lot of people didn't enjoy it. Myself, I enjoyed it. A lot of other people did. But there were some people who, who thought it was maybe a little, not, you know, lackluster. Um, so it didn't go over well. So I think when they released this one, um, they were probably going to do the same thing and they're probably going to release it in different Prime accounts was my thought here and there, kind of introduce it to different parts of, of their audience. But this is the wider shot. So we're seeing more of Maureen, almost her full costume from her waist up. You're seeing her in, um, a, I'm going to say a battle, and we're going to talk about this in a second here, um, 
and you see something to her left in the background. Now it's, it's a troll lock, 100% for sure a troll lock, um, fighting something. And you see her grasping the one power during this clip. So I think, I think they didn't mean to put this out. I think it was a mistake. I think they meant to put that three second clip out, but we got this and, and now we've seen a little bit more. So here I'm gonna show it to you again and we're gonna talk a little bit about that troll lock. So I'm gonna show you the clip and then I'm gonna show you a zoomed in clip of the troll lock right afterwards. Uh, and this is uh, courtesy of Narg from the Daily Trollock. He put it up on his Instagram account, kind of zoomed in the Trollock a bit, and then we'll talk a bit about that Trollock. Do not underestimate the women in this tower. Do not underestimate the women in this tower. Really, really cool. So, that Trollock. Um, it's in the background. It's fighting something. We can tell that from, from both clips that we just seen. Um, but you can't really tell what it's fighting. Now, the last teaser we got out of Amazon Prime was Lan fighting things. Now Lan was fighting a couple of different things um, and it was framed and shot and released to us in such a way that it looked like he was fighting things that were off screen. However, that's not the case. Uh, I talked about it in my Lan video where you can see where they intentionally edited things out and they made things really shadowy in the foreground or perhaps it was just the way it was shot and you're not really seeing it. But whatever he's fighting is in the shots but we can't see it. So we slowed it down. I showed you the showed you where it was. Showed you the black outlines where it was either cut or they're not not showing it in the frame. But he's fighting something, and I believe it's probably Trollock. And you can see the fire in the background. You can see the lights, the same lights that are behind Moraine in in the this teaser. Um, so I think the two of them are very related. So he's fighting a Trollock, or someone is fighting a Trollock. I'm gonna put my money on it's probably land in the background fighting the Trollock though. And there's a couple things about this Trollock. You can tell the Trollock is a few feet taller than whoever. It is they're fighting so that's that's really very cool um you know trollocs are depending upon where you read or where you get your information from between 10 and 12 feet tall um it's some things like a companion says one thing the books will say another thing there's there's, there's different different bits of information here and there um but it looks true to form to that one thing we notice about this trolloc though is you're just seeing fur you're seeing brown fur. You're not seeing any armor. You're not seeing a cloak. You're not seeing uh, what appears to be any real big weapons or anything. You're not seeing anything like that. Um, so it's not that's not true to form to the books. But I'm going to let you right, know right now, as I really, really hope that most of the Trollocs in the show don't have armor, don't have clothes. I hope, hope they don't, because you got to look at it this way. Um, they're cannon fodder. That's what they're used. They're, they're the shadows, uh, expedent, like the shadows forces that just go out and they, they absorb damage. That's pretty much what Trollocs are. They're, they're not anything really special. They just, they're bred in the hundreds of thousands to go and fight. That's it. Um, outfitting that many really low foot soldiers would be terribly difficult. Um, we all know there's forges, uh, in the books where they make the fades, blades and stuff, but they don't really showcase how the Trollocs get their armor and weapons and stuff. It's just one of those facts that sort of just glossed over. And I think it's something that the wider community, other than people who read the books, will probably pick apart a little bit. Um, so that's the first reason why I think that they're not wearing armor. The second reason is, is they are cannon fodder. In the books, you see people, unskilled people, taking out Trollocs, sometimes in multiples. Uh, Rand killed Narc uh, very easily, I might add. Um, Completely by mistake, but he was completely untrained and scared of his mind and killed Narc. Uh, you see Tam killing quite a few of them in the beginning. They talk about, uh, in the first ten chapters of the books, the villagers themselves, without any real weapons or training, killing Trollocs as well. So yes, they're scary, they're big, they're bestial, but regular people can kill them. Now, if they were armored in plate armor, and they're fighting somebody with weapons that aren't necessarily well adapted to fighting somebody in heavy plate or even in chainmail, they're going to be much more dangerous. So having them not armored in the show allows us to believe that they be, can be killed by the dozens or hundreds later on in the series and, and, and you know, probably in the first episode too. Um, so that's sort that's of my thoughts on the Trolllock. So I like the way it looks. Uh, I'm going to say in the background here, it's hard to tell if this is a CG Trolllock. It's hard to tell if it's someone in prosthetics in a costume uh, because it is, it's not in the main shot. It's grainy. It's not really... HD or true to form, but let me know in the comments down below what you, what do you folks think? Do you think it's a mistake the Trollocs aren't wearing armor or clothing? Do you think um, this is a person in a suit? In because we do know that Rafe Judkins, the showrunner, has said that practical effects are king. He wants practical effects uh, as much as possible in the show. And I've heard from the stuntmen and other people that there are people wearing prosthetics actually dressed as Trollocs fighting and stuff. Um, 
but they're probably the close-ups. But we're going to see some CG stuff in the background. We have to. There's going to be CG because you can't have hundreds of Trollocs on the screen with people in costume. So let me know what you think about that Trolloc. Um, all right, so that's enough about the Trolloc. Really very cool, but our very first look at Shadow Spawn, our very first look at any bad guy from the book at all, other than Fane, of course. Uh, but there's that. So the next part of this trailer we're going to look at is I want to look at the background of Moraine, what she's doing, and her costume. So I'm going to show the clip one more time. Do not underestimate the women in this tower. All right, so I hope you paid a little bit of attention there. Um, in the clip that time there, I, I asked you to look at the background, her clothing, and what she's doing. So she's obviously grasping the one power. So she's she's channeling here. Now, there are a couple of things here that people are going to pick up on. Yes, she's channeling. She's grasping the one power. She's reaching out to the true source to do so. But her eyes are closed. Now, that's described in the book as being a massive block because you can't channel if you can't see. So I'm not sure why that's showcased here because she is definitely grasping the one power. 100% doing it, that's what she's doing in this. But why would her eyes be closed? I honestly think, in, in my opinion, it's probably for dramatic effect. It probably looks really good on the screen. She's, she's, she's holding up a bunch of power. She's going essentially Super Saiyan. She's, she's pulling in her energy to unleash a big attack. Um, and it looks like it's going to tax her a lot, so she's going to close her eyes, gather herself, and then go ahead and unleash whatever she's doing. Use the one power with her eyes open. I think that's what she's doing here. So I've seen it mentioned in a few of the forums. I've seen it mentioned actually on Twitter. Why are her eyes closed? And it happened last time when the teaser came out, the three-second teaser. So there's that. Um, so that's that's what I think the explanation is for that. Next thing is the background. You see the lights in the background. You see what's going on there. I fully believe that this is winter night. This is the wine spring in the background with all the lights from Beltane, all the little lanterns they have there. Um, I think that's what we're seeing here. Much the same as in the land teaser, where we've seen the lanterns in the background and stuff, which we assume were Beltane as well. Um, so I think that's what's happening. So a little segue before we get into what she's wearing here, because uh, that has been a hot topic, oddly enough. Um, I believe, and this, this, is, this is my belief, I have no information this is just a belief I have and a hunch that the land teaser and this teaser are completely related, that they fit together like puzzle pieces, and we're going to see little bits of the trailer until the trailer comes out. I think these are direct cuts from the trailer. I think when the trailer drops, we will see this scene, we will see the scene with land, but they're going to be married together uh, in such a way that they actually fit like in the show. We're going to see some other things, uh, maybe even some more releases, like Wheel of Time Wednesday type releases, uh, until the trailer drops that are all going to kind of fit into the trailer and... I think that's smart. I think that's a marketing campaign that they're, they're going to kind of get behind. Show us little bits of the trailer and then show us the trailer all at once. That way we get excited about new things and then we get excited about something that's not new but it's just a conglomeration of all the other new things we've had uh, even more so. So it's pretty smart on their point if they do that. So let me know in the comments down below, do you think that that's what they're doing? Do you think that these clips we're seeing are going to be showcased in the trailer for the show and do you think that that's actually is what's happening here? Now, like I said, I'm not sure. It's just a hunch but I think think it's right. So, uh, I promised we talk about her clothes. Now, a lot of people have been very upset about the clothes. Um, I've seen a lot of the pictures of the costumes for the show. I've seen a lot of things that uh, Isis did, and it's the beautiful. The, the costumes are absolutely immaculate and beautiful. Um, but it's been said that in this shot, it looks like Maureen is wearing pants. Now, there's been quite a few people who've come to the defense of that, saying that uh, you know your uh, divided riding skirts look a lot like pants it's a lot of uh, it looks a lot like a victorian wear a victorian-esque um you know influences in the show uh how can i still wear pants if men wears pants it's a big part of men's personality no other women in the, in, in the books wear pants things like that but i think i think we're going to see something just a little bit different in the show for costumes than we would see in the books because uh, it's a little more practical. I think this is going to be their type of divided riding skirts, their type of uh, costume that they're going to wear uh, when they're out and about in the world because it makes it a little bit more practical for them. Now, all that being said, um, I think we're going to see something just a little bit different than what people are going to expect for the costumes, but they are absolutely beautiful uh, from what I've seen, so I'm not concerned about that at all. Now, if you're the type of person that uh, don't does not want to watch the show or is very upset that an eye is wearing pants rather than than, than a full flowing ball gown <laughs> or, or a, a, a big dress, then perhaps the show isn't for you because there's going to be other changes as well. Um, but all that being said, I do believe that this, what we're seeing here is a costume that she's going to be wearing for much of the show, at least in the field. And when I say in the field, it means out and about, not in say Tarvalon or a major city or uh, at home. Um, and why do I say that? Well, it's been pointed out to me by a couple of different people and Narek had a really good shot of it on his Instagram that this particular costume she's wearing here is very, very eerily similar 
to this costume. Now, this costume is our very first look at what Maureen would wear in the show, oh, well over a year ago. Uh, and it got leaked and uh, got taken down everywhere, it got leaked. Uh, I cropped it out. I showcased it in a bunch of videos. Other people talked about it too. But if you look at her shoulders, uh, the, the outside of the, 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 sh the shoulder por portion, um, it matches the costume she's wearing in that teaser. Now, you know that her neckline there is a bit different than the neckline here, so she's wearing something a little bit different underneath. Uh, but she's also in what appears to be a castle in this picture, uh, so maybe a little more formal. Uh, but that could be their version of a shawl, the, the, the blue on the outside could be the version of the blue shawl because it is the same in the teaser and in the same in this photo uh, and it's the only really two looks at Maureen we've had in costume over the last couple of years they've been filming so my guess is that's probably their shawl there's probably a lot of certain aspects to the costume that changes based on where she's at maybe when she's out in the field uh, in the two rivers on the road in a city in and around other people things like that so that's my guess all right so all that being said, there was a whole lot to unpack here. Uh, I was really very excited to see this. And again, it has been taken down. So if you haven't already seen it, I've showcased it here in the uh, in, in, in the uh, the video a few times. So bookmark this video, uh, save it, come back to it, watch it as much as you like, show your friends. Um, and again, I did mention um, in the last video or the video before that I'm going to be running a contest again soon. Now, I'm going to do this contest when I hit about 10,000 subscribers. Uh, so I've done one at 2,500. I did one at 5,000, and they both turned out really well. I'm going to do one at 10,000. I'm going to do something a bit different. I gave things away at 2,500. I did a show with a fan, uh, with, with a viewer at 5,000. 10,000, I don't really know what I'm doing yet. So... I want your input. In the comments down below, let me know what you think we should do for a contest, what I should maybe give away, what I should do, uh, what ideas you guys have. Let me know, uh, and then maybe we'll do a poll on Twitter or on Instagram or something like that and kind of figure that out. Um, so if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe because as soon as we hit 10,000, we're going to do that contest, and uh, the rules are going to be simple. Be a subscriber, like the video, and comment. That's pretty much all it'll be. So we'll do that when we hit 10,000. Um, the other thing I do want to mention is uh, if you have any questions for me on TikTok, I answer all kinds of questions on TikTok. I, yes, I do have a TikTok. I'm a little bit old, but I'm trying new things. It's lots of fun. My, my kids are getting me into it. Um, leave them down below in the comments here or go over to my TikTok, which is linked down below in the description. Uh, do the Q&A there. Leave a comment on one of my videos and ask me a question, whether about the book series or the show. So far, every question I've gotten has been about the book series in some way, shape, or form. I've answered nothing about the show so far. Um, so ask me some questions. And then head over to TikTok and follow me. All right. I want to thank you so much for sticking with me here to the very end. And here's to many more.